Hello and welcome to lesson two, sexual reproduction in plants. These are the spec points from the teacher's guide, so maybe pause the video, have a look at those. So the learning objectives for this session are to be able to understand and describe the process of double fertilisation and explain the roles of enzymes in digesting a pathway for the pollen tube. Uh, describe how seeds and fruit develop following fertilisation and also apply your understanding to exam questions. So please pause the video and complete activity one. So you should recognise that these questions are recall from last lesson. So the first question, draw and label the organisation of cells in an embryo sac within an ovule. So we're just looking at the carpal here, so the female reproductive part of the flower. And um, we should notice that we've got eight cells in the embryo sac here. So you guys hopefully have labelled these and we've got at the top here the antipodal cells. So we've got three antipodal cells. In the middle, we've got a diploid polar nucleus. And then at the bottom, we've got two cells called synergids, either side of the oosphere, which is the female gamete in the middle. Draw the structure of a may, uh, mature male pollen grains. So you should have something that looks like this. And we should have identified the outside layer is called the exine. The inside layer is called the intine. Together, they help keep that pollen grain, stop that pollen grain from becoming dehydrated. We've also got two haploid nuclei in the centre of the pollen grain. We've got the generative nucleus. So this is going to divide during double fertilisation into the male gametes. And then we've also got the tube nucleus. And again, we'll come back to that in double fertilisation. This is going to help with the growth of the pollen tube. And again, both of those nuclei are haploid. So both of them are N. Compare the production of gametes in humans and angiosperms. So comparing the production of gametes in humans and angiosperms, remember angiosperms is just a fancy word for flowering plants. Um, so top exam tip, <clears throat> remember to say both or whereas when you're making these comparisons. So for example, both angiosperms and humans during reproduction carry out meiosis and mitosis. And in these pictures, we're looking at pollen production in this picture and sperm production in this picture. One difference is that in angiosperms, meiosis comes first and mitosis comes second, whereas in human sperm production, mitosis comes first and meiosis comes after that. So that would be one difference. There's a few more differences here that you might want to just pause the, the video and check and see if you can add them to your notes. Please just pause the video and jot down as much as you can about double fertilisation. And hopefully you remembered quite a lot of things. Um, so double fertilisation, double is basically talking about the two fertilisation events that occur down here in the ovule of the carpal of a flowering plant. So you can see here we've got a flower and if we zoom in on the carpal there, and look more specifically at the ovule, this is where double fertilisation is going to occur. So for that to happen, if you remember, we've got the pollen grain and within the pollen grain, we had two nuclei. So we had the generative nucleus and we also had the tube nucleus. Now, the pollen tube will start to grow down the style. And as it grows down the style, that generative nucleus is going to divide by mitosis to produce another genetically identical generative nucleus. The tube nucleus is going to be helping synthesize and secrete hydrolytic enzymes to help digest a pathway down through that style. Okay? And the pollen tube will keep on growing all the way down until it reaches um, the micropyle, that little pore, where the pollen tube can basically release the generative nuclei. And so in double fertilization, one of the generative nuclei is going to fuse and um, fertilize the diploid polar nucleus, and the other one is going to fuse and fertilize the oosphere. So please pause the video and complete activity two. There's a video that accompanies this activity that should hopefully give a really nice, clear view of what happens in double fertilisation. 
So let's have a look at those answers. Uh, describe what happens once the pollen grain lands on the stigma. So the pollen grain germinates. This basically means that a pollen tube is going to start to grow through, if you remember, we called it a pit on the diagram that we looked at previously, but here it's referred to as a germ pore. So the pollen tube here is going to start to grow out of the pollen and it's going to grow down through the style. OK, and as we just looked at in that last diagram, that's going to move towards the ovule of the female reproductive part. Okay, and that's where the female gamete is located. Describe and explain how the pollen tube travels down the style. So the pollen tube grows out of the pollen grain and secretes hydrolases. So just a reminder that this is a key word for exam questions. Remember, fertilization is where the female and male gametes fuse. Again, another key word that you might want to add to your dictionary. Describe the roles following uh, in double fertilization. So the tube nucleus is going to uh, control the growth of the pollen tube. The male gamete, so one of the male gametes is going to fuse with the female gamete or the goose sphere to generate a diploid zygote. And just a key tip here, um, always try and say the N number um, or haploid or diploid whenever you're talking about nuclei in human and also plant reproduction. So it's going to form the diploid nucleus. And the other male gamete is going to fuse with the diploid polar nucleus to form the triploid endosperm. So here you recognize triploid is tri means three. We're talking about ploidy. So the number of chromosomes within each homologue. So we've got three N. And the oosphere, the female gamete, will be fertilized by one of the male gametes. And that's going to again produce the diploid zygote. Sketch a diagram of double fertilization. So you had one on the previous slide and there was a little extension question about the synergids and antipodal cells. And you might have a diagram that looks something like this. Please pause the video and complete activity three. So after fertilization, what do each of these develop into? So the triploid endosperm, this is basically going to develop into food storage for that seed. And that food storage will provide the growing embryo with nourishment so that it can get bigger and grow enough um, to create a little plumule, um, which is a tiny little um, germinating seed part. And it needs enough energy to grow big enough so that it can then start to access energy from the sun. The ovary wall develops into the fruit, the ovule into the seed, the integuments into the tester, and the micropyre will just remain as a pore in the tester. Please pause the video and complete activity four. So a short quiz for you, I want you to write down the N number or name the ploidy um, of the following. So the first one is the male nucleus. Can you name the ploidy? And we should have haploid or N, endosperm. We should have triploid or 3N. The pollen tube nucleus is haploid. The polar nucleus is diploid. The zygote is diploid. And the female nucleus is haploid. Just a quick review of the learning objectives. Thank you.